Welcome back to Game Theory 101. I'm William Spaniel, and today's topic is independence. We've been covering the four axioms we need to use expected utility theory. Previously, we've talked about completeness and transitivity. Those two axioms dealt with preferences over outcomes that are occurring with certainty. Independence over lotteries and continuity, in contrast, deal with preferences with uncertainty. So we're going to start off with independence over lotteries. Independence says the following. Let P be a probability, some value between 0 and 1, and X, Y, and Z be outcomes, or probability distributions over outcomes. Independence says that I weakly prefer X to Y if and only if I weakly prefer the lottery of X with probability P and Z with probability 1 minus P to the lottery of Y with probability P and Z with probability 1 minus P. That has a lot of notation in algebra, but if you see this in action, it will make a lot of sense. Let's think about your preferences as follows. You most like winning a million dollars, then you like winning zero dollars, and then you like dying a painful death. Notice that this is a rational preference, it's complete and transitive, and it's also the sensible preference ordering. So those are your preferences. But this deals with outcomes occurring with certainty. Independence, again, is focusing on situations where there's uncertainty, where there's lotteries over these outcomes. So let's think about these two lotteries. The first lottery gives you a million dollars with probability one half, and death with probability one half. The second lottery gives you no money with probability one half, and death with probability one half. Independence says that given your preferences before, the preferences of outcomes occurring with certainty, you must prefer lottery one to lottery two. And if you pause for a second and you look at what's going on in lottery one versus lottery two, this makes a lot of sense. Whatever's driving your preference for lottery one and lottery two can't be the one half probability of death. It's in common in both of those cases. It can't determine whether you like lottery one or lottery two. It also can't be the case that the probability of receiving money is determining your preference. That's because it's one half in both of those cases. It's one half of receiving a million dollars and it's one half of receiving zero dollars. The only thing that's different between outcome one, or rather lottery one versus lottery two is the million dollars versus the zero dollars. And given your preference from before that you like the outcome of a million dollars with certainty to zero dollars with certainty, it has to be the case that you prefer lottery one to lottery two. This is a straightforward version of independence, but notice that there's this tricky part of the definition, or probability distributions over outcomes. X, Y, and Z do not have to be outcomes that occur with certainty. They could be themselves lotteries, right? Because probability distributions over outcomes are lotteries. So let's look at a more complicated version of this. Think about these two lotteries. Lottery one is a lottery that occurs with probability P. This is a compound lottery. With probability P, you get a lottery between V and U, where V is occurring with probability Q, and U is occurring with probability 1 minus Q. And then the remaining 1 minus P portion of the time, you receive Z. The second lottery is not a compound lottery. It's a little bit more straightforward. You get Y with probability P and Z with probability 1 minus P. Notice that in the setup from the definition, all we've done here is taken that X outcome and turn it into the lottery of V with probability Q and U with probability 1 minus Q. If you have a preference of lottery 1 versus lottery 2, then what has to determine it is your preference between Y and that lottery of V with probability Q and U with probability 1 minus Q. That's because Z is the same in both of these cases, and you're getting it with probability 1 minus P, and you're getting Y with probability P, as well as that lottery with probability P. So whatever is determining your preference for lottery 1 versus lottery 2 has to be entirely your preference between that nested lottery and the outcome Y with certainty. I've talked before about how completeness and transitivity make perfect sense. It's really strange if an individual's preferences are not complete and transitive. And while independence was straightforward when we didn't have these compound lotteries, 
once you introduce these compound lotteries, you actually see a lot of people violating expected utility theory. And I'm going to show an example of this in the next lecture when I talk about the allay paradox. Hope you enjoyed this, and hope to see you next time. Take care.